C-C-H-U-R-C-H Church. It's October. We get into this time of year. It's time of the year they say the veil is the thinnest between our world and the, the dark world of the hereafter. Standing next to some graves, older ones. Here's someone by the name of, last name of Nelson that died in 1960, long before a lot of you folks were ever born. Here's a very old tombstone here. It's hard to, hard to read goes back a long ways. At one time it was broken in two. I guess they tried to repair it. But this time of year we, we get into the dead, the spooky, the scary. I just thought I'd come out here and walk around the cemetery a little bit. Look at some of these tombstones. I talk about a lot of friends of mine, a lot of acquaintances of mine, myself included. Interested in paranormal, ghost, that sort of thing. And, uh, of course, that's what all this brings to mind, isn't it? Gosh, died 1909. Seems like a long time ago, huh? Long before our existence, these people walked this land. Clearly, they lived somewhere in the vicinity to have been interred in this ground here. Johnny, son of uh, A.W. and Matty Wallace. Yeah, you just think about it. Very short lives, I assume, because there's no date of birth, no date of death on these children's graves that uh, they didn't make it through their first day or so of life. Across this little walkway here, some some newer looking tombstones. But as you go through here and you read the names and the dates of the period that they lived, it gives pause for thought of the temporal state of life, physical life as we know it. Of course, not everybody believes in a hereafter. And I'm not doing this to debate that question. That question has been debated and debated and debated. And it gives people a comfort to, uh, to believe that there's more to life than this one. Some uh, argue in that debate. And, uh, you know, what is death? And they would say that uh, death is the same place you were before you were born. And from my uh, mainstream religious belief, if you will, mainstream Christianity at least, there's not anything spoken about where you were before you were born. That, that birth was your the beginning of your existence, I guess. So they didn't... Uh, they didn't cover the area of time of eternity before you came to life. That's totally, uh, totally neglected. But there was one that, there was one that did. Only one that I know of. I'm not going to say. Of course, let me let me correct myself on that. Walking the cobwebs here. It's that time of year, cobweb <laughs> time of year. Ah. Uh, Reincarnation kind of covers that. Kind of covers where you were before you were born. I'm not sure in all the teachings of reincarnation if they actually go to the level of, um, you know, did you have a starting point? Or were you all, did you just always exist? Did you always go through this cycle of birth and rebirth and rebirth and rebirth until you reach some kind of pinnacle, I guess. So I'm not sure about the beginning aspect. I know the Mormons, though, believe that you had this eternal existence in the spirit realm to begin with. Interesting, right? They've got it covered. 
they covered it pretty effectively in their teachings. I'm not going to argue the validity of what they believe, whether it is something that is worthy of any credibility or not. But there you go. The uh, reality is that they've got it covered. For the most part, though, the beginning of you began when your physical birth, but it's not in with your physical death. For billions of people, that's kind of the belief. Here's two guys that, uh, I guess they were buddies. Young guys, one born in 78, the other in 79. I assume they both died in a car wreck, buried next to each other. Uh, June 11th. 2003 they've been gone for a while now they uh, of course died died really young so their time in this physical realm was very short and of course that what I was talking about this young man here would have uh, his, 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 his existence would have began on May 24th 1979. Even if you go back to the Bible, it talks about the creation account. In Genesis as God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Became a living soul at the moment that he took his first breath. Huh. Interesting thought, considering our debates with uh, abortion and so forth. So are these people spirits in another realm now? Did their existence come about at the moment of uh, physical first breath? Or did it come about at the moment of conception? Is that when it took place? Big questions, huh? A lot of people come out here and commune. Here's uh, Blaine DeSwain Briggs. Very young guy. And at one time, you can tell that uh, family and her friends communed quite a bit with Blaine. Gosh, 16, 17, 18 years old. Roughly 18, 17, 18 years old, very young. Who knows how he ended his physical life. And is he out there? Is he out, out there somewhere just in another realm, just watching, knowing, seeing. You know, that's what that's what we say ghosts are, right? All these people that live, that's that's what we're saying they are. Absolutely. Somebody's left a toy there. It must have been a child's favorite toy. Well, not really. It's an older guy. <laughs> not a child's favorite toy. So Pete who uh, drove a truck. And he died young too, David. Michael Kelly. Makes you appreciate it when you get old that uh, you have the opportunity to get old, huh? David Michael Kelly. 30, 40, roughly 43 years of age. And then you find others that had a physical existence up to 100 in their 90s, 80s, 70s. It's amazing that millennia ago, thousands of years ago, whoever wrote those words contained in that book we call the Bible, the Old Testament, it said that the average lifespan of man would be 70 to 80 years. 
all those thousands of years ago that was written. We really don't know who wrote it, but those numbers, has it changed? Has it changed? We've kind of resolved some of the infant mortality, even though that's not totally resolved. Oh, Haley Scott Wyndham barely made it to a year old. Kind of makes me ponder that scripture there. Second Timothy have fought the good fight, have finished the race, have kept the faith. Wonder what kind of race one year old. Ran. I wonder what kind of fight a one-year-old fought and wonder what kind of faith a one-year-old kept. I have to ponder those things. It's like one quote, the memory of the dead is, I mean, the uh, dead's locked up in the memory of the living, something like that. can't remember who said that. But, of course, like I said, this is... Uh, the big question, what happened to these people? Are they just gone? Are they just, as one scripture in the Bible said, from dust you are to dust you return, their memories all but forgotten. The older these gravestones get, the less care they receive. People that knew them no longer exist. My family's pretty much gone. Those that were close to me are gone. I've got some that I'm not close to. I don't worry about <laughs> whether I'll be remembered when I die or not, but you do reflect on those kind of things. Here's Nanny Goodall. Died in 1928. The chances of anybody alive now that can really remember Nanny are very slim. I'm not saying they can't, just saying it's uh, it's a slim possibility. Most of the people that Nanny knew in her lifetime are, are gone, and Nanny was equally young. We're looking at, what, 21, 20, 21 years of age. Nanny left. There's Billy, November 12th. Petty officer, William Goodall. But these people walked this earth. They saw the earth with a whole different set of eyes than we do. And of course, we reach out because we want, for one thing, we want the comfort of believing that this isn't the end. That's what we want to believe. That's what we want to, that's what we want validation, that this isn't the end of it. That this person that died in 1891 only died a physical existence. That they're still out there, another round, they're continuing on. Oh gosh, we want to believe that. We want to believe that in the worst possible way. We set aside a lot of a lot of things in order to hold on to that belief that there is something out there. I mean, let's face it, that's kind of what Halloween's about, isn't it? Didn't Halloween start from uh, what they call the Day of the Dead? They honored the dead. There's another cemetery not far from here, maybe 15, 20 minutes. There's a grave there that Family and loved ones gather for a huge tailgating party there around that grave once, once a month. I pass them, usually going home from my office. It's right on that path. But we deal with this, don't we? We just want to believe real, real bad. We don't want to think otherwise. We don't want to deal with it otherwise. We want to, we really want that. So 1895, 
I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. El, Alberta, Alberta, Teague. 1895 passed away. There's nobody on this planet that communed with Teague there. She, uh, nobody alive today knew this person in the flesh. Maybe some distant story or photograph there, I don't know. So anyway, we suffer our losses. All my family died. The uh, closest members, mother, dad, sibling, on and on, uncles, aunts, that I was close to. I've got some cousins out there I'm not close to at all. Never, never was really. But all my grandparents and parents and all the above were gone by my 50th birthday. I never concerned myself. I, after, after having buried all these people, well, I say buried, actually, the latter ones in, that I lost to death were uh, cremated, never actually buried. But uh, I never troubled myself. I never gave thought to, are they out there? Can they see what I'm doing? In fact, such a thought was, in my mind, a little bit troubling because, gosh, <laughs> is mom watching me sit on the toilet and wipe my butt? Or God forbid, is, is my parents up in the spirit world watching me watching me masturbate to some porn? Is it just uh, just something we kind of superficially grab a hold of? It's like the belief in God, I guess. I often kind of entertain that thought as far as people's true belief. Look at this one. Two years old, roughly. Um, not even two. <laughs> one one year and a few months. 1887, nobody remembers that child. Cecil Jones, long forgotten, nobody alive walking this planet ever knew this child in the flesh. The same with Amos Elliot, died 1890, erected by his daughter Emma. Emma, for a certainty, is long gone. If she wasn't, she'd be in a lot of history books for being the oldest person on the planet. But uh, I see these preachers and I see these people that are just fervent believers. They just pray to God, pray for me, and they just really believe God's there. It's going to be a miracle, and on and on and on they go with this. And uh, But then in their lives, it's like you're not really truly living like you believe what you say. You're really not. You're not giving, number one, credence to uh, this all-knowing, all-powerful God, seeing your every move, reading your heart, because, really? I just don't believe it. Even the way you conduct yourself on the roads. <laughs> Jesus said, he that is small and I mean who that is faithful in what is small is faithful in what is large you can't obey a speeding law and you make jokes about it and at the same time claim to believe in this almighty God well I mean that's all cool I guess it's all great except I don't believe you I don't believe you live up to what you claim So this isn't a fraction. This is a very small amount in this little cemetery here, which really covers both sides of this road, a new section on another side of the funeral home there. All the billions of people who have died over thousands of years, are they actually ghosts? Are they actually spirits out there in another realm? Is there, if that's true, then you're never truly away from it because Everywhere you go, somebody has already planted their foot. They've lived, they've died. 
over the ages different sorts of people from all different parts of the globe and no telling we dig up bones and skeletons all the time when they trying to build a, a Walmart or dig out a new road somewhere it's, it's a constant all over the world they find remains of what used to be human beings so that means the other realms got to be huge to hold all this because if all the people that have ever lived on this earth were still here this would be one crowded planet to say the least one very crowded planet But if you believe those things, if you honestly believe that there is a hereafter, you honestly believe that you are going to be a ghost for eternity. And I say ghost, spirit, soul, it, it all comes out the same. The word ghost is an ancient term actually used in the Old English, 1611. It was a common word, you know, in the King James Version. They didn't say Holy Spirit, they said the Holy Ghost. That's the same usage of the term. So ghost, spirit, angel, always, it's got the root, root meaning of the same, pretty much. So in different ways through our society, we have really, really strove to validate our desire, our beliefs that this is not the end. This, what we see here, is not the end. Our final breath, our final heartbeat, is not the end of it. That there's more. There's more out there. You look up in that sky, there's something greater, there's something better. There's got to be. But yet we don't live like we mean it, do we? Different cultures have different ways of viewing the dead. The Mormons, actually baptized for the dead, married for the dead in proxy. A lot of cultures do some very interesting things when it comes to dead. In our culture, in the Western culture, the English-speaking world today, and I'm sure in other cultures as well today, the, the very popular ghost hunting paranormal research is all around. They love to creep through the middle of the night and go to graveyards and abandoned buildings and have their EVPs and spirit boxes and all the above. So does John Burnett, who clearly looks like possibly another truck driver. No, John Burnett, is he, is he out here? Is John Burnett out here somewhere? Is John Burnett able to hover over this land? Is John Burnett able to see what is widow, wife is doing. Is John Burnett able to look out for those left in the world of living? Or is John Burnett just floating out in the great vast universe out there living some wonderful existence in some paradise and heaven type situation? Is that where John Burnett is? And the reality is, of course, if, uh, if that be the case, then this little life we have that between 27 and 79, 50 years, 52 years, Oyula Arnold, 52 years there. Did her existence begin in 1927? And that 52 years, let's say it began in 27. She died in 79, 52 years. Now let's think about this for a moment. Coming close to having been dead for as long as they lived. But we can go back further. There's no doubt there's some here that have been dead longer than they were in this physical existence. And when you talk about eternity, which is what we try to think of when we talk about this afterlife, right? I mean, that's the whole purpose of it. It doesn't end. We go on. This physical existence was 
like a short-term affair. So when we think about that, when we give thought to these people we know that now have been dead longer than they were alive. Well, clearly, look at this, 1865, gosh, 100, <laughs> and, um, oh, man, 135, 100, over 150 years dead. They didn't live that long, even though they lived a pretty good, pretty good life, I guess. Um, they've been dead a lot longer than they were alive. They've been in that other realm, that other world, longer than they've been, than they walked this planet. So really, what does this little life, this little existence mean at the end of the day? And if I'm going to spend eternity in this other realm, that means, am I saying that I'm going to meet up with all these people? I've got eternity to meet all these people. Maybe I'll remember, and again, in the afterlife, I remember a name that I saw on a tombstone. That's a name. Mother. Hope. Hope. Ellen Baker. So will I look when I get there? What about the Lees? Will I look for the Lee family? Will I look for them? Loving sons. My gosh, how many loving sons were there? James, Michael, Kenneth, Robert? Really? Here's the Lee family. Are they up there together? Are they there together? Are they all a family unit in this great hereafter? If you notice, I'm not trying to answer these questions because nobody has the answer. Really, who's got the answer? Nobody. Everybody's got theories. They don't have the they don't have the answers to this. Is you know, Hubbard has been in the ground away from his physical existence since 1974. Lenora, no indication of Lenora's death. So is Hubbard waiting on Lenora up there? Is that what's happening? Is that our reality? And if it is, then why do we plague ourselves and burden ourselves so much with this little temporal existence? Why do we weigh ourselves down so much with this? If this is the reality that, as you see these tombstones, these people live, they walk, just like you and I. They, they hungered, they thirsted, they had sex, they crap, they peed, they do, did everything we did. They loved, they hated, they had emotion, they shared. The peripheral was different for them. Maybe they never lived long enough to see a car. Maybe it was horses and buggies. Maybe they didn't have indoor plumbing. It didn't affect physiologically what they had to do. It didn't affect their desires. It didn't affect their love, their hates. It didn't affect their hunger. It didn't affect any of the above. It just, they went about getting somewhere different. They communicated in a different fashion. They didn't have cell phones, but it was real. They were here. These tombstones are not just made up, were they? These are where the remains of these people that existed were interred. Is it not? If you dug into the ground, would you find a casket collapsing and some skeletal remains of someone that once lived? I would think so. I don't think anybody's perpetrating a fraud with these cemeteries and graveyards. But that still leaves the question of where are they? Are they? anywhere or is this simply it 
And if they are somewhere and you're going to spend eternity with them in that somewhere, then what's the harm of trying to communicate with them? What would they tell you if they've been observing everything from afar, out of the bubble of this planet, out of the bubble of this life, they're now detached from all this and looking down upon it, what would they tell us? Would they tell us to stop war? Would they tell us to feed the poor? What would they tell us? Would they tell us to wave a flag and be patriotic? Or would they tell us to tear down the borders and wrap our arms around the fact that we're all human, regardless of skin color, regardless of language, regardless of all? You mean to tell me in that eternity in heaven, paradise, wherever you think it may be, you mean to tell me that they have the heaven of India and the heaven of the Muslim and the heaven of the Baptist and the heaven of the Catholic and the black heaven and the white heaven, it's all segregated by belief systems and all segregated by skin color and ethnicity. Is that what it is? Or do you think that in that eternity there's actually unity in that any of these long dead once people now living in another realm, if that's what you believe, what would they tell you? Would they tell you to stop the hatred, stop the violence, feed each other, care for each other, embrace each other? This life is so freaking short. If you think that 70 or 80 years is something, then you certainly don't understand eternity. If you think that segregating ourselves and fighting over food and fighting over life's necessities and refusing to help each other is a thing to do, then you don't understand eternity. You don't have to. You don't have to believe in eternity. That's your choice. Whether you believe it or not does not make it true. You can believe it with all your heart, but that doesn't make it true. Who knows? There's a whirlwind of leaves there around the grave that's kicking it up. Is that a spirit? Is my talking out here stirred up some some spirit that's letting me know of its presence? Have I hit a button? Have I, have I turned on a switch? Well, check out my site. I delve into questions and thoughts that a lot of people don't care to address. I dare to question a lot. A lot of people don't dare to question. I'm not telling you what you believe, but I think it's important to think. Datingthedead.com, and I'm working on a book. It's a different book. I'm not writing a book trying to sell you a doctrine. I'm not trying to sell you on a God. I'm not even trying to sell you on an afterlife. Here we go. Stirred up another little whirlwind here of air. Where I'm standing is perfectly still, but there goes a little vortex right there. Is there something opening up around me? Some vortex there in the graveyard of spirits of deceased people. They keep going over there toward that tree, don't they? I could believe that if I wanted to, right? I could honestly grab a hold of that and say, look what I've stirred up here. Look. Look what I've caused because of my walking around here and talking about this subject. Are the spirits trying to talk to me? After it all, it is the time of the year that, guess what? They say the veil is the thinnest. So you get a little bit different taste of where I'm going. And if you come to the Crypticon down in Orange Beach, October 25th and 26th, less than three weeks away, tickets available at abnormalalabama.com, only $35. We're gonna approach some subjects in a way that gonna make you think. It's not gonna be your average ghost 
storytelling time, even though there's going to be a little bit of that. So we're gonna dare to dig. We're gonna dig up some graves. Here's someone that was dead and buried June 28, 1954. Roughly a little over five months before I was born. John Colquitt. Colquitt? Colquitt? Or Colquitt? Let me be 64 years of age. Died at my age now. Well, anyway, www.abnormalalabama.com giving you a little food for thought as to some of the things we're going to delve into, some of the questions that we indeed are going to be asking. On one of my websites, the first thing you see is replace fear of the unknown with curiosity. And I have great curiosity. And so does my friend Frank Lee, Cat Hobson there, put together a Noetic Sciences Research Program into the paranormal. My twist on it may be a little bit different because my background's in religion. So, who knows? But I do know you're gonna be entertained. It's gonna be thought provoking. It's not going to be your average Halloween con, even though we're gonna have some fun, even though we're gonna have a costume contest. Hopefully people will come in costume for Halloween. Let's enjoy it. Just because we're gonna approach some subjects in this manner does not mean that we cannot have fun. Life is short. Take pleasure in it. AbnormalAlabama.com. My number is 888-501-6689. Please feel free to reach out to me to explain what I'm working on. You can go to datingthedead.com and learn a little history about our relationship with the dead and with ghosts. Who knows what that is?